Now I'm going to use four of these 320 watt Trina panels. And before you think this is too expensive, look on Facebook Marketplace. You usually can find used panels such as these. Then we'll run our two extension solar cables through the side of the window here and just a temporary run through the living room here into some branch connectors. And that will make it so we can get voltage and then we'll also use the clamp meter to get current to monitor every hour and then run that into our heating element. So I'm gonna try to sink them into the sand as far as possible. And this is just some general sand that I picked up down at Home Depot. Wire those in series using these little fork connectors through 12 gauge copper bare ground into inline splices. These are just Wago inline splices that I use for residential electrical projects. We'll do one wire there to bring them in series and then we'll connect up our solar cables. And then kicking off the day, it's pretty cloudy, but things should clear up a bit. So we'll both get cloudy and sunny conditions during this test. Is this something that could actually heat a small room or not? So that front temperature probe, a little hard to see, but it's about 74 degrees Fahrenheit and the back one's 71. So it's warmer than the room, but not gonna do much in terms of heating the room. Now, if we go deeper with the center probe, we can see we are starting to store some of that heat deep inside the sand, but this is just starting out. It's gonna get much, much hotter. So for our second hour, here's the temperatures we're seeing. 114F in the front, 113F in the back. So we are heating up, but the real temperature is in that center of the sand. And I have to use a K-type thermocouple because we're well outside the boundaries of that temperature probe we used originally. Now we're gonna go well beyond 500 degrees Fahrenheit here. So let's see how much solar power we bring in now that the sun's out to result in these type of temperatures. I just cut a three foot section in half. So I had 18 inches for each section and then marked six inches from each end so I could bend these into use. Then I'd press those down into the sand. And the whole purpose here is we want to pull that heat out of the center of the, the sand battery because we saw how much heat was trapped in there. And I'll set that fan on top. And this fan works, that little gray section in the middle between the base and the top is actually called a Peltier device. And that will create a little bit of current when there is a difference in temperature from top and bottom. So with this FLIR thermal imaging camera, the little target in the middle will give us our temperature and the red target is the maximum within the scene. So right in the middle there, it's maxing out the temp, but this base is about 160 degrees Fahrenheit and the top is 85, so that's enough of a difference to then spin the fan. And then that fan starts to spin and I have the three different thermometers. One is one foot away from the pot, then three feet and then five feet showing the difference. And overall, I would say, 